So there's a very common blood test called hemoglobin A1C. Your doctor can get that done for you. You can even get it done yourself. You can even do finger stick tests at home uh, from a kit you buy at the drugstore for just a few dollars. But one way or another, you can get a hemoglobin A1C. What that value tells you is how high your blood sugar has been rising after meals over time. It's, a, it's an average of your blood sugars dating back 60 to 90 days. It's also glycated hemoglobin. That is, it's the hemoglobin uh, in your red blood cells that when exposed to blood glucose becomes glycated. That is, the glucose molecule modifies the hemoglobin molecule and glycates it. And this is an irreversible reaction. So glycated hemoglobin is what you're measuring when you measure a hemoglobin A1C. Now, by the way, other proteins in the body become glycated also. Whenever blood glucose goes above normal, let's say it goes from 90 to 140 because you had oatmeal or you had um, uh, too much fruit. Well, when that blood sugar hits, goes above normal, above 100 that is, you glycate other proteins in the body. If you glycate the proteins and lenses of your eyes, over time you get opacities cataracts. If you glycate skin, skin thins and gets brown aging spots. If you glycate the kidneys, you develop kidney dysfunction over time. If you glycate the proteins in, in cartilage in your hips and knees, cartilage over time becomes brittle, erodes, and then you get bone-on-bone -bone arthritis. Glycation is a part of aging. That's why one of the most popular theories of aging is called the AGE, theory of aging, the advanced glycation and product theory of aging. That is, in this hypothesis theory, aging is at least partly due to the accumulation of this debris, these glycated proteins that become useless. And they are essentially nothing more than just garbage, just junk that accumulates in various organs. Well, glycated hemoglobin is another example of a protein that becomes glycated whenever blood glucose ranges above normal. But there's more information buried in that hemoglobin A1C besides just how high your blood sugar is going. By the way, we aim for a hemoglobin A1C of 5.0% or less. Pre-diabetes is typically regarded as 5.7% or higher. Type 2 diabetes, 6.5% or higher. Most doctors are happy with 7.0% uh, uh, for their diabetics, which, by the way, is absolutely crazy. That's insane. We aim for 5.0 because that's where all excess risk, including cardiovascular death, all that excess risk is erased. And we know you have wonderful metabolic health at that level of 5.0% or less. But beyond that, hemoglobin A1C also tells you how fast you're aging because it's an index, right, of glycated hemoglobin and thereby it's an indirect gauge of glycated proteins elsewhere in the body, the cartilage, eyes, kidneys, heart, etc. And so you can use that hemoglobin A1C to gauge how fast you're aging. So you can appreciate if you're a type 2 diabetic and you're not controlling your blood sugars well, your hemoglobin A1C is 12.7%, which is terrible. Uh, you're aging very rapidly, very rapidly. You're going to have cataracts, kidney failure, skin aging, heart disease, dementia, much faster because you're accumulating these glycated uh, debris end products in all your body's organs, as well as having terrible complications like peripheral neuropathy that leads to amputations and heart disease and blindness from um, uh, diabetic eye disease, etc. But that A1C tells you how fast you're aging, and type 2 diabetics are aging much faster. If your doctor told you your hemoglobin A1C is 5.6%, just below the pre-diabetic range, therefore you're good. No, you're not. Your risk for cardiovascular death, for one thing, is 300% uh, higher than people with lower levels. And you're glycating, you're aging faster. You will develop cataracts, heart disease, kidney disease, skin aging, etc., arthritis, faster than you should. So get that hemoglobin A1C, take a look at your value, and get that level below 5.0%. How do you do that? Do all the things we do, all the basic efforts in my Wheat Belly and Undoctored programs. The diet, vitamin D restoration, magnesium supplementation, omega-3 fatty acid supplementation, uh, iodine and thyroid optimization, and all the efforts to cultivate bowel flora. And you should see that hemoglobin A1C come down uh, to lower levels. Now, it does take time because, remember, it's an average of 60 to 90 days, kind of a moving average for those of you who know, who knows, who know what that is. 
So it's very slow to respond. So it won't respond in weeks. It responded many months or longer, okay? So if you're going to check it again, wait at least six months to check your hemoglobin A1C. But in there is buried very good information about your rate of aging.